Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. Today I'd like to talk once again about somebody in Ireland called James R. Mayer. And <laughs> this, I'm, I'm taking a different approach today. I'm, I'm just going to try to be relaxed and <clears throat> not to uh, allow this this man's idiotic comments to to annoy me. Uh, so his site is called How to Tell If Someone is a Crackpot. And let's just begin reading from the beginning. So he says, it's easy. By the way, before I continue, uh, James R. Mayer writes really well. Um, he, he has an ability to use uh, words that are, uh, you know, uh, convincing in, in many ways that actually cause one to think twice about the truth value of his statements. So uh, he says, it's easy. If they're really a crank or a crackpot, then they will make non-trivial errors of fact or errors of logic, or both. So all you have to do is to show that they are making such errors. <laughs> you know, that first paragraph actually is, is a reflection of James R. Mayer himself, because that's precisely what he did when he tried to uh, criticize my new calculus. So if we look down at the first comment that I, that he actually printed of mine, that he published, um, I showed him, oh, oh it's, uh, I think it's further down here. I showed him in this first comment, I said, I'll address your first error and then stop because everything you've written is utter rubbish. So I showed him that his first statement, uh, where he says, I've defined f prime of x in terms of m and n and what other rubbish is written. And I said, wrong. Uh, the value of f prime of x depends on the m and pairs. And I explained to him uh, in very much detail, and I've also written articles in this which show how the definition works. So, uh, and then, of course, there's this other idiot from Math who comes here and encourages him. Uh, an idiot from, I think, Sweden called Zealous Malum uh, suffers terribly from the very effect he accuses others, the Dunning-Kruger effect, although it's unscientific. I shouldn't really use it, but Zealous Malum doesn't know anything about mathematics. But uh, And here we have him saying there is no discussion because anybody with mathematical knowledge can see how unsound and invalid it is. So no proof, uh, just full assertion. And if you look at his comments on Math, you'll see that they all follow this particular pattern. That is an assertion with zero proof behind it. And of course, then another idiot jumps in and, you know, also tries to cast out, I don't, I've, I don't even know who this fool is here, Eliminator came, but that's unimportant. So uh, James R. Mayer knows that he's wrong. And how, do, how does he know that he's wrong? Because he, he comes back and he admitted uh, early on. So he says, uh, John Gabriel pointed out some plus minus typos in the original. Hmm, plus minus typos. Uh, Excuse me, those are trivial errors. But of course, that makes no difference. Hmm, that's his first logic error <laughs> there. Because he says it makes no difference to the key point. Actually, it makes a very big difference to the key point. If you are making trivial, trivial errors, a lot of trivial errors, it will make difference <clears throat> uh, where the logic is concerned and everything else is, is concerned. And I'm not just talking about an arithmetic error, but all these points here are refuted. And James R. Mayer has this idea that he is a deep thinker and a true academic because he qualified first uh, in a particular, as a veterinarian, and then secondly, he got an engineering degree. So he has this, this larger than life idea about his intelligence. But 
I mean, there are many people nowadays, who, it's not uncommon for them to have four or five degrees and several PhDs. But it doesn't mean they're intelligent or that they have an extraordinary academic ability. It means simply that they're able to uh, commit themselves and have the discipline to sit through these courses and obtain the degrees. And that's a proven, especially given uh, this example of James R. Mayer himself, uh, who believes he has, because his lecturer told him, his uh, teacher told him that he had uh, an incredible ability in mathematics. So he says, my mathematics teacher was horrified that I should make such a choice, since in his opinion, I had showed considerable ability in mathematics. So you see, he's also very careful when he writes. He doesn't want to come across as I do when I say I am the greatest mathematician, because that seems cranky. So he'll, he'd rather say that others said that of him. I don't need others to say that of me because others don't have my intelligence and it wouldn't make a difference if they said that. But I'm always the exception to the rule. <laughs> and that's really what uh, stuns my critics and throws them off completely is that I can be quite rude and abrupt and yet know what I'm talking about. But in most cases, that's not true. So for example, the majority of the human race is incorrigibly stupid, and that's a fact. Uh, I can say that, but chances are that if you said that, you would really be a crank. In my case, I'm not a crank. Now, uh, the funny part is that uh, somebody else got on his side and tried to correct him. Uh, some, somebody called David Ivey, I have no clue who this guy is. Never met him in my life. So uh, David I Ivy begins by saying, you said Gabriel's method does not provide the derivative. And however, I actually did the algebra and his method does return the derivative and it returns the auxiliary equation that has a value of zero, just like he said it would. And it's not complicated. So this entire comment here of David Ivey has no errors. It's, it's all correct. Okay, and David Ivey can see this. And he says, uh, so if we agree thus far, we can rewrite the above expression like so. Correct. And that's, that's what my definition of derivative in the new calculus is based upon. The mean value theorem, which you see ubiquitous, which you appears in this ubiquitous form in which I was the first, the very first human in history to prove constructively. No academic moron before me was able to do this. Yes, I say academic moron because I have a loathing of arrogant and stupid academics that cannot be expressed in words. Uh, I hate them in, in such an, with such an intensity that I sometimes can't even put my sentences together. That is how huge my hatred is for these arrogant bastards. So James Mayer responds. He says, you say that Gabriel sets this to zero, blah, blah, blah. He talks some crap. He said, over here he says that, um, uh, he says that it has some imaginary roots, which he doesn't know what he's talking about. He says the only solutions for this one are either this, this is just total garbage. Um, uh, <laughs> he, again, here his arithmetic is is incorrect. It's not a case of just trying to solve for n and m in the, in the way that he's done yet. He just set this here to zero, but this is wrong. The auxiliary equation is not just this; it's this entire equation. But being the moron that he is, he missed that detail. So you cannot just go ahead and solve this particular equation and say, "Oh, it has imaginary roots." He's an idiot. Um, if he paid more attention to, to detail, he'd know that. So he responds by saying, sorry, mate, but Gabriel's calculus is just bullshit. And then again, Ivy patiently says, I think your mathematical reasoning is a bit off. So <laughs> in a polite way, is trying to tell him that he doesn't know what he's talking about. And he's right. Mm -hmm. We can actually just plug in some values and see if it works. Okay, that's not generally true, but in this case it is. If we select a value for X and blah, blah, blah. So he shows that we can plug these into 
Gabriel's difference equation, and he ends up with a comment here saying, it looks like it works to me. So, <clears throat> Mayer responds again, uh, if you think that, then demonstrate which step in the steps that I went through that is wrong and demonstrate the error, the error in it. Well, I've just shown you the error in it. Uh, Meyer's an idiot. He's just gone ahead and he's solved this here and he's got an imaginary roots, but that's not, that's incorrect because it's not just this which is equal to zero, it's this entire expression here. And of course, uh, IV sees that and says, wow, this, is this guy an idiot or what? <clears throat> so he doesn't see it. And then Mar says, don't continue the bullshit by thinking that you can prove a generalization by cherry picking a few values. You can. And, and of course, a lot of red herrings that straw man arguments that uh, Mayer <clears throat> is, uh, is uh, providing. So Ivy again, first off in regards to cherry picking, you're the one who picked that function and I, sh and I showed it does, it does work. So, um, and then he ends up this first paragraph, he says, which is actually pretty cool if you're not being obstinate. Uh, okay, he needs an apostrophe R E, but that doesn't matter. I mean, many people make that mistake in English. Um, English is not my first language, so sometimes I also make certain mistakes by just being in a little bit of a hurry, but that's not an issue because I can always correct that, <laughs> thankfully. In any case, uh, as for a flaw in mathematical reasoning, um, he says, uh, your statement that you can't set x to 1 because it is a variable is a good place to start. Of course you can. And actually, that's precisely what we do when we find the derivative at a point, don't we? <laughs> you know, James R. Mayer, you're really an idiot. And I'm sorry to tell you, sorry to just be so crude. I just don't have the energy to discuss these things with you because your IQ is, is like that of a moron to me. Mm. Anyway, he says... Uh, and then, and then Ivy attempts to explain the mechanics, the variables M and M are the distances from X, blah, 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 which I've explained thousands of times. And I don't want to go over it. And then Ivy finally tells him, actually, it's easy to see why Gabriel's calculus works. And he gets right to the point. Yes, it's the mean value theorem. See here, average value. He's talking about the mean value theorem. Okay. So, and with a final comment here that says, this really isn't rocket science. And of course, <laughs> Mayer doesn't have a response to that. His first uh, comment says, clearly you don't have the first clue about math mathematical proof. That's a very arrogant statement that I expect from a professor in math mathematics, some, someone uh, of the uh, type of Gilbert Strang, that moron from MIT. Uh, I don't know if he's retired yet or not, but he's typically the kind of idiot who would say something as snobbish and uh, standoffish as that. To prove a general conjecture wrong, you only have to show one example of a failure of that conjecture. Well, that's typically the kind of uh, uh, talk that one expects to hear from this kind of academic. Uh, he will say things to appear erudite. And it's entirely wrong, by the way. Uh, and this reminds me of the chief troll on Psy.Math Math uh, called Dan Christensen, some moron from Canada <laughs> who talks a lot about mathematical proofs but knows absolutely nothing about them. And then here comes the, the nail in the coffin, which I did. <laughs> Uh-oh, <laughs> all one has to do is go back and see how many times poor James R. Mayer has nailed himself. But then he resorts to a very low blow uh, for James R. Mayer because James R. Mayer is typically a kind of person who will talk about ad hominem and how someone doesn't have uh, the ability to discuss anything. So he says, and neither do you have a clue about, about variables. Gabriel's or yours, if you and Gabriel are the one and same person, hmm, which I consider very likely. So he's got no arguments. Of course, I'm not David Ivy. I don't even write like David Ivy. 
I don't have the patience to write like David Ivey. Uh, I hate to say this, but Ivey is a gentleman. I would just, <laughs> I would just beat this guy to to a point where he not be able to talk anymore because I don't have the patience to talk and discuss things with idiots and people of very low IQ and mayor's IQ is much, much lower than mine. In fact, most people don't have my IQ. Um, my IQ, in fact, is one of the highest IQs. Hence the equation for the derivative must hold for all values of X in that domain, blah, blah, blah. Wrong is just stating obvious facts, trying to produce distractions, irrelevancies, has nothing to do with the topic at hand. And then finally ends with, I'm not going to bother with the rest of your bullshit, consider this post closed. And that's what he did to me too when I tried to help him over here in the first comment. Um, because I thought I'd try to, you know, be civilized, <laughs> which I'm not usually civilized. I'll be the first to admit that. Do I really care? Well, I don't really because it doesn't matter what you tell people. They will hear and see what they choose to. Um, and this is true from any perspective in life. Uh, they are born in a certain environment, in a certain social uh, class. They have certain expectations. They believe in things that were almost, in a sense, brainwashed into them since they were young. And anything that is different to them, they consider to be uh, inferior or rather defunct in, in many ways. So yes, I am the exception to the rule. And when I normally uh, use foul language, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. I am correct. But if you do, you're an idiot because you don't have my intelligence. Sorry to be so blunt. And I'm just getting straight to the point. If you don't know what you're talking about, the best thing you can do is shut your mouth. I know that's a little harsh, but it's the truth. So now let's look, uh, look at a little bit more of what David Meyer says. He says, as I entered my last years of school life, I was still indecisive as to what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. Uh, academically, I was quite capable. Yeah, he's about as capable as any other idiot who's able to sit through a course, you know, discipline himself, memorize things, etc. cetera. Um, so he, he became, I think, a vet for the first few years of his life. And then here comes the, the uh, introduction, uh, which leads to his uh, book that he published. And you'll see that he took an interest in Gödel's uh, incompleteness here. Now, now, in this particular case, uh, Meyer was able to sense that there was something wrong. But really, not for the reasons that Meyer writes, and his book is a load of crap, just to be blunt. But nonetheless, that, you know, I don't really want to go into that right now. I just want to show you that this poor fellow here is really, really confused. So uh, he, he carries on talking about these things, tries to prop up his uh, credentials with a first class degree in engineering. <laughs> oh, my dear. Anyway. Uh, so he goes on here and then he says, entirely by chance, a few years ago, I came across a book of Gödel's serum, blah, blah, blah. And then he, it's all, it all leads up as PR to The Shackles of Conviction, which is a book that he self-published. Okay. Now, uh, if we take a look at that book, uh, which is this page here, this is it here. And he says, the question, what is truth? is a question that Rolf McNeil, so this is somebody that he talks about in relation to the theorem and why he wrote this book. And it's all very uh, uh, academic speak. So for example, I felt impelled to write this book for two principal reasons. I mean, I've written so many books that this just, you know, it comes out across in his writing uh, and, uh, any liberties, watch this expression here, any liberties that I have taken with definitions and te technical terms do not affect the principles involved. Oh dear, <laughs> you know, 
I mean, it's just dripping of academic ignorance and arrogance. Uh, one of the most obnoxious mixtures, in my opinion. The other reason was that for me, the life of Kurt Gödel was a fascinating jumble of facts that never seemed to fit together. They never fit together. Well, for two reasons, my dear James Mayer. Uh, Gödel was really an idiot. And two, when you get an idiot trying to understand another idiot, usually that's what happens. Things don't fall into place. Um, I found either a reverential portrayal of an intellect of superhuman proportions. Wow, that's very flowery speech. Lovely. Yes, James Mayer. Nice. Or else a portrayal of a pathetic figure incapable of normal human existence. Ah, normal human. So this gives us a little bit of a, an insight to his psychological architecture or his makeup. I thought I could perhaps give Gödel a human face that would in some way fit in with the salient facts of his life. Oh, my word. All one has to do is just be able to write well. And the, the expression that comes immediately to one's mind is that bullshit baffles the brains. Okay. So all you have to do is just, you know, have a good in, ability in English and it doesn't really matter whether what you're talking about is fact or uh, has any relevance or has any use. Uh, it turns, and, and here, here in this, my tongue is getting, getting twisted because there is so much I want to say. And let's just use the own guy's phrases. He says, this book turned out very much as I wanted it to be. <laughs> well, of course it did, James. You're trying to sell the damn book, you idiot a book that can be read simply as a work of fiction. Oh, a work of fiction, but also explains mathematical discoveries and concepts as part of the story in as simple a manner as possible. So if you're in, as intelligent as I am, you'll see just from that paragraph that James R. Mayer really has nothing to say. He's just, he's just a, an ordinary academic. Yeah, he was good at, memorizing facts. He had some uh, uh, ability in logic. He was able to see things slightly uh, more than the average person would. So he's, he's a typical academician, so to speak. And we have a synopsis of his book here. This novel is written as two intertwined stories. One is about Ralph McNeil, set in the present day, and the other is about Kurt Gödel, born a hundred years ago. So this is kind of poetic because uh, he's, he's telling a story and people love listening to stories and especially someone who can tell stories well and Rolf Mayer can tell the story. <laughs> There's no uh, doubt about that. Uh, as good as any other academic, as good as Gilbert Strang can. And you all know what I think about Professor Gilbert Strang of, of MIT, don't you? Well, I'm a little out of breath right now because I've been trying to say a lot of things. And I don't really like talking that much. But just to finish off this uh, video, we can look at Gödel's incompleteness theorems. And I'll tell you in one statement why Gödel uh, has no logic. Okay. Um, so the first incompleteness theorem states that no consistent system of actions whose theorems can be listed by an effective procedure and algorithm is capable of proving all truths about the arith arithmetic of the natural numbers. That in itself is false. Okay. Um, I have provided the first perfect derivation of numbers in my article. It's a, actually a famous article now on LinkedIn. It's called How We Got Numbers. No one before me was able to, to do it. And no one before me and after Euclid had a clue what is the meaning of a number. A number is the measure of a magnitude. Never before in human history has that definition been given. I was the first to give it. To give it. I was also the first to come up with a rigorous formulation of the calculus. And... And then here's another reason why everything that Gödel did is wrong. He says, employing a diagonal argument. <laughs> Cantor's diagonal argument is probably the most laughable rut in mathematics. 
I can't think of anything more illogical, more incorrect, uh, more juvenile than that argument. It's not even an argument. It's a misargument. It's wrong in every conceivable way. And so goals and completeness theorems were the first of several closely related theorems. I mean, when you start with bullshit, you end up with bullshit. Cantor's diagonal argument, I'm sorry to say, is just crap. And I proved it in my video on his, uh, on his uh, theorem, on his argument, which is all about the uncountable real numbers. Um, there's not much more to say there. I've spent enough time on the idiot Cantor and on David Hilbert. And of course, uh, piano, oh, Giuseppe Piano is, is quite laughable too. Uh, please visit my YouTube channel and watch my videos. Also read my articles, grow wise, don't fall for this crap. Um, the, the reason why Meyer and others are publishing, so self-publishing articles like this is pretty obvious. And if you can't see it, you're a moron. That's all I have to say. This is the New Calculus channel. I'm John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.